Let me close. Okay, they're filtering in. Good. Go ahead and start. Well, hold on. There's people. It's taking a little while for the, the common. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Anna's just going to let me know when it's a good time to start. It takes a few minutes for everyone to go from the waiting room over to the, the live room. So okay. I see the numbers like tick, 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 and one once it like levels out, then I know it's, it's good to go. Alexander, don't text her. You're going to distract her. Awesome. Hey, guys. But they can all hear and see me now, right? Yep. yep. So before I begin kind of my uh, official welcome, I'll tell you one of the things that happened in my house today is that when you work at home, for many days, as some of you probably have before, um, and your children press and press and press, um, you get a dog. So um, in the middle of this chaos, uh, I will be um, somehow puppy training a dog, which my daughters have promised to make their responsibility, but I think it's gonna be mine. Um, so there we go, that was my adventure of the day. So um, I'm gonna ask Anna if it's okay to start, if we've got a majority of people in. Uh, first, I just anybody that was there last night, I just wanna say I am sorry again, um, Facebook Live, perhaps the emojis flying around, I'm not sure what between that and technology was a little difficult. So we're hoping that this will work um, and I have someone that can tell me if it doesn't, but also it means that we can post this and if there's information in here, you can actually go back and find what you're looking for and other people can find it too. So I'm gonna start with the same message I started with last night, which was about remaining calm. You know, I think I listen to my daughter speak. I listen to restaurants that close and call up to tell me why and how we're going to help their employees. I watch social media, all the things that you do. And then I tie it up in a bow with the news media. And at times it can feel in incredibly painful. And what we thought last night was that today we were going to be able to get some relief in phase three of the federal bill. Unfortunately, our elected officials in Washington were unable to get that done. And so again, tonight we go to sleep wondering a little bit about, or if not a lot about what is to come. So I'm gonna present to you a couple things within phase three of the federal bill that I think if it passes tomorrow will be helpful to us and give you a little bit of guidance on that. And then sort of talk through where we sit today because I believe that we're at the very starting line, as painful as that is to sound, we're at the starting line of this crisis for our industry. And as much as we want to keep people open, and we'll talk about some creative ways that's happening, um, you know, the association in my role very much right now is about sustainability, but also learn long-term viability. And what are the tools and resources that we need to have in place to help you do that? So I'm gonna go back to 10 days ago, because if you try to think about 10, go, 10 days ago, it's hard to remember what you were doing. But one of the things I do know is that we had 50,000 restaurants in Texas. We contributed 70 billion in sales and we employed 1.4 million people. And I don't have the stats in front of me of what, where we sit today, but I can tell you it's nowhere near that. We've seen already, and I projected for a um, media outlet today, that I truly believe if assistance does not come now in the form of, of financial money in your hand, that we could be up to almost 500,000 jobs lost and about 35% of our restaurants. And just, just take a moment to think about that. It's, un, it's, it's catastrophic, there is no other word. And so we are going to go into this phase of making sure that at the local level, at the state level and the federal level, we get the assistance we need. And I think for all of you, the good news our voice is loud and our voice is being heard. So as we walk through this, I'm going to talk uh, first to you and um, about a couple updates. The first is around taxes. And so I think you know we started a campaign that we aggressively wanted to try to defer taxes for our restaurants. Um, there are taxes you collected in February. I can appreciate that. But the idea of pushing it wasn't that you were never going to pay taxes on the money collected for sales tax or beverage. It was about trying to keep liquidity, money in your pocket, so you could pay employees and do other things to try to keep your business alive. We worked with the comptroller hand in hand. Uh, comptroller Hager and I had a number of conversations. Some were more fun than others. But at the end of the day, we were so close to that window that we were able to have an opportunity for all of you to simply file 
and then call. And I know so many restaurants have said they worked with them and were able to put them either on a payment plan or ensure they didn't have any fees um, associated with being late or being on that plan. So as we now are in March, going into April, we're about to do this all over again. And there's another tax due. So we're having those conversations now, but I want you to make sure you're also watching the news in Texas because of the drop in oil and what's happened in West Texas, our budget as a state is really funded by sales tax and oil and gas. And there's lots of other components, but those two are super critical. And I don't know about you, but you can go down right now and get gas for $1.45. And so that's not good for the state budget. And so our comptroller has sort of hinted today that we're potentially gonna have to go into a special session. There's a lot of talk about that for a lot of different things on managing the crisis, but also that he's going to have to bring the budget down. I mean, so much, I don't know the number, but it's significant. So as we are working hard to try to get savings in that category, we just have to be thoughtful and a little empathetic about the resources that are gonna be needed to kind of fight this unforeseen virus, but also then what can we push down or even alleviate in the tax department without completely breaking the entire state. Um, the next thing we'll talk about is the SBA disaster loans. I encourage all of you to please, please make sure that you have gone to the economic injury portion of the SBA's disaster recovery plan. Um, many of us, the hospitality and restaurant association led the way in, in, in really filling out the amount one per, I think, 254 counties to make sure that Texas would be approved by SBA for this particular type of loan. Now there's a new piece of information I think is really important for all of you. Some of you applied and I ask you all to please, uh, please apply. One of the things that's in this potential bill that will get signed is relief from those loans. So if you have good, you can potentially apply for the loan without collateral at this point and Another reason many of you were getting denied or thought you'd get denied is you had a very strong line of credit. And in this phase three bill, they won't count that line of credit, which means you may indeed be eligible. So it takes just a couple of minutes, go either to the texas.gov website or just simply search for Economic Injury Loan Texas and fill out that application because it's up to $2 million and you don't need to have property damage. The next thing we'll talk about is around alcohol. Oh my gosh, I had elected officials say to me, Emily, we have a massive health crisis and we're talking about alcohol more than that some days. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess we're doing our jobs um, as an association, uh, but, but, but here's where we're at. We have curbside and we know from all of the just incredible feedback that that is helping so many of you to be able to take the exact same rules of delivery and to be able to do it take out right out your front door. There is also an incredible push to ensure that we can also do prepackaged. So make the margarita that boy I'd love to have um, and ship it out and seal it right there on site. So not factory sealed. Um, we started a campaign today. I think one of the um, brilliant, I call it brilliant because it's sort of fun, uh, pieces that Anna did, um, who is one of our one of our leadership team members, she actually has released the margarita, right? Released the margaritas. Let's make this easy. We have incredible uh, restaurants that offer margaritas that people will drive from all over the country for. And we know that we're really, really good at keeping people safe and following all the alcohol handling and food handling rules. And so we started today and we currently have 4,800 emails since about two o'clock this afternoon to the governor requesting that they expand this waiver and include mixed beverages for those with mixed beverage permits. So if you haven't seen that yet, please go to the Texas Restaurant Association Facebook page, look at what the link is, fill it out, send it to all your friends, but we want the governor to know that we can do this right. And we want them to know that, that really that the restaurants need this in order to stay open and to keep people employed. So that would be where we are on beverage. We also were able to get something passed, which may not be as helpful yet, but it may be a little bit down the road. And that's around refunds for event permits that were pulled for T from TABC. I've heard for some of you it's helpful, for others it may not be, but you know, 
I firmly believe we just need to always be one step ahead of what might be coming to make sure we're prepared. So if, if you haven't seen that yet, go to one of the earlier um, announcements on the member app and you'll see what qualifies and what doesn't. But again, at this point, it's not really about picking up pennies. It's about surviving until the really big aid comes in. So I encourage you to make sure that you take a look at that as well. Um, another, I think, pretty cool thing, and I was so hoping that we would be able to talk about it in more detail tonight, but um, Representative Parker reached out to me a couple of days ago, and he's in North Texas, and he said that uh, a very, very large chain reached out and said, why aren't we actually positioning our restaurants to be retail outlets? And that's really tricky language because we don't, we're not retail, um, even from a tax standpoint, but you have all very creatively, most of you have thought through what products you can actually bring in and sell. Many of you leaped on the toilet paper. Um, gosh, I, you know, I can't find it anywhere, but it sort of seems like for some reason people must have a lot of it. But you started doing paper towels and napkins and a lot of the non-perishables. And then many of you started getting into other items like beans and rice and chicken and turkey. And so as we started talking, we kind of took it all the way back to the farm. And what's interesting is the Farm Bureau is now incredibly concerned because, you know, well, there's a million cows in Amarillo and I saw them and got to meet some of them. And guess what? They end up in our restaurants, so many of them. So as we go back, now you're talking about not just restaurants that aren't able to put food out, the distributors then are backed up and there's a spoilage issue with all of our distributors and partners. Then you back up to the middleman before that, and then you back up to the individual farmer, family farm, whatever you want to call it, where this comes from, a lot of the fresh meat and produce from Texas. And so we have this entire supply chain that has been kinked because our dining rooms are now closed. We put together a sort of, I call a special order that we would like the governor to, to, to acknowledge, which would create all of the restaurants, the 50,000 that are freestanding and those that um, you know, may or may not be um, open, but we have that resource that as the pressure grows on the grocery store market, that we partner with those folks and we provide some of the items that are currently either out of stock to their supply chain or just in such high demand that we would benefit. The grocery stores win in a time like this. We win because we have restaurants that can produce revenue and keep people employed and the consumer wins. Because in many cases, if you have one trip out for the day and you stop at your grocery store and they don't have what you need, you may just go home and not have that food, especially in our low income neighborhoods. If you can drive through Taco Bell and on your way through buy many items that you need for your family at an affordable cost, that is a win for everyone. Um, this, before I got on the phone, we were on with um, Governor Abbott's uh, legal team, and it's currently sitting with um, the health, sort of the health department. Um, TAN is just, Representative Parker just won't let this go. Our distributors are amazing and they're already doing this. And what I wanna do is kind of put a protective cover around it and make this a state initiative supported by the governor to make sure we can keep doing it nonstop. So that is going on and we expect tomorrow or the next day to be able to issue a formal sort of declaration of us being moving into this space. It is for now. We don't expect our restaurants to become grocery stores. We are totally different businesses. But right now, it is about leveraging the resources, the capital, and the infrastructure for whatever industry you're in to get us through the crisis. And that's the role that I want the restaurants to play. Um, on education and webinars, um, I want to give you some really good news. Many of you are trying to navigate unemployment, furlough, what happens to my benefits. Now we have uh, paid sick leave and um, family medical leave with the Families First Act being passed. And there's so much coming at us. And we had one of our partners actually did an awesome webinar that's online on our website that you can watch again, that had so many questions and answers, even things like, okay, if you're an essential employee, do you have to have your temperature taken at work? Are you allowed to do that? Are you not? So lots of stuff is crossing us. So we have that up, but then we, are, we have been so blessed with the Texas Workforce Commission, and they have been working hand in hand with us. And Aaron Demerson, their commissioner, reached out this morning and said, Is there, would you like us to actually have four or five of our attorneys on a call so your members could call in and ask questions? So they get 
the right advice and they can ask all the nitty gritty stuff. And so on Thursday of this week, we'll put out a link at 2 p.m. All of you can join and you can actually get the legal advice right from the Texas Workforce Commission. Um, I think this is really important because what I've seen, which is quite sad, is there are opportunists in a crisis and there are people out posting that they'll take care of this and that for you and they'll file this and that. And so I truly believe with anything that's related to the government, the best stop source is them directly. And so um, huge thank you to Tommy Simmons and Commissioner Demerson because they'll bring their team together and we'll also record that. So if you can't make it because you are running your business, we'll be able to then have you um, listen to that later. Um, on the Families First bill, I think the two big things people are asking about is around paid sick leave. And so on our website, and I think Anna's posting right now for all of you, thank you, um, we have out sort of a summary of what does this mean to you? So who qualifies? What are you required to do? I can tell you right now that one of the pieces that really it just upsets me and that doesn't get us anything, but we fought really hard to change it. We hope it will be changed in a revision coming up, but it's a one for one tax credit. So the sick leave that you'll provide an employee for COVID-19, or if they're longer term having to take care of, God forbid, someone in their family that has this virus, you will get a one for one tax credit, which means that the employee will get the help they need at the same time, you will get a one-for-one -one benefit. My problem with this is that the federal government is asking all of you as business owners to front the money. And I want a different mechanism that allows the money to come right to the restaurant without going through, right to the owner, without going through all the rigmarole, and in some cases, two, three, four, five months. Now, I don't own, own a restaurant, I love restaurants, but I can tell you this, right now, many of our restaurants, and especially our smaller restaurant groups, don't have the money to front all of this cost when right now they're trying to pay employees and keep them on payroll. So more to come on that, but on our website, there's a really good write-up both from the Texas Workforce Commission as well as the National Restaurant Association. And I encourage you to pull that down and it's also all available on the app. Um, next, shelter in place. This is a big one. Um, you know, sometimes I do go to sleep, especially after dine-in thinking it would have been nice if the governor just made a single decision for the state. And I know that doesn't sound right because you, we were so lucky that our governor didn't jump in right away and really, I believe, thoughtfully walked through this. And I can tell you from dialogue with his office, they tried to do everything they could, but, but his job is to weigh public health and safety with the economic engine of the state. And so when you look at the curves, I understand. I wasn't happy, but I understand. My job now is to get us open as quick as we can. In the meantime, the change of events of the last two days has been shelter in place. Um, shelter in place just sounds kind of scary if you think about it, um, but I was down by Dallas today, don't tell anyone, and if, I don't know, it didn't even seem like that was happening. It was just essential employees, certainly more quiet, but really the idea is keep more people home and we'll get out of this sooner. So right now we have Dallas, Waco, Brazos Valley, Bear County, Lubbock, and we expect Austin and Houston tomorrow. Um, what's interesting is that we have been actually at the forefront of these conversations. <coughs> Sorry, one second. You can only imagine how much I'm talking these days. <coughs> um, here's what we believe and what we've been able to do. Every single one of these decisions by a county judge, a city council, has been made with input from the Restaurant Association. And in all cases, they have kept us open. <coughs> Sorry, guys. They have kept us open and they are working very hard to make sure that our drive-through, our takeout and delivery remains open as we go forward. Anna, do you wanna add anything on that? Sure, yeah, I think um, one, one thing to keep in mind is, and I know Emily has reiterated this multiple times, but because most people get food from restaurants, it's so important to keep this open. And I mean, that's why we're looking to make sure that restaurants are retail as well so that they can sell products. Um, the truth is like, it's so much easier for a large family, especially to just be able to go to their local restaurant and get curbside. Um, and in order to keep, we have to keep those open. I mean, we could easily see um, economy collapse even more if we shut down restaurants completely. And that's one thing we're, we're trying to stay away from. I mean, people wanna work, they, they need to work. And if we can give them the opportunity to do so, I think that's the responsible thing to do. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Hope I got together too. Thank you, Anna. 
we think that as each of these goes, you know, I'm proud that our team is at the table. I'm proud that from the health departments to the mayors, the city council, even judges, our board members, our team, we are in these conversations and, and, and helping to educate. And, and through all this, they're learning more about the criticality of our industry. So now I'm going to move to an announcement from today that I'm really proud of, and that is the creation of the Texas Restaurant Relief Fund. We were able to quickly see that so many organizations are jumping up and, and trying to raise money and getting money to individuals very quickly. And we really paused and thought long and hard if this was an area we wanted to get into because by background, I come from academia. So grants and this whole process is part of you know what I've done my whole life. And I know it's hard and I know if you're, if you're gonna do it, you have to do it well. Um, and so I, the, the team pulled together over just a couple of days used a model, sort of a national model for Texas, and we have one very clear, direct give, and that is we have so many independent restaurants right now that are hurting, and they're hurting because they're trying to stay open for one more day, and they're hurting because they don't want to let go of their employees. We have created a mechanism for very large cap, uh, corporations, for different foundations, different organizations that believe in our industry, and as I told my team today, who doesn't love restaurants? that can fund the Texas Relief Restaurant Relief Fund. That money will go out in $5,000 increments. First come, first serve, the application, everything is live. Money goes back out. If you're unaware, we actually have a very lar large education foundation that does workforce training, but also all of the culinary arts training in high schools across Texas. So we already have a 501c3 foundation. This is what we do. Um, and I'm really proud because even in the first, what, maybe two hours, there was no, two minutes, there was a $5,000 donation and they've just starting to come in. So we'll keep everyone updated. But the real goal is that we have visibility into all restaurants. And more importantly, we know that we can be that one source and ensure that there's lots of different causes. We want to go to independent restaurants, independent restaurants and their employees. And so you can actually go to, um, Text TRRF to 31996 if you would like to donate, or maybe your company is in our sector and would like to donate, or you can also go to our website and you can look for the application and download today and apply if you are a restaurant that's independent and is in need. So let's move to federal real quick. Just a question that we got related to that, Emily, is um, confirming that the TRRF fund, the turf, as I like to call it, is available for non-members as well. Yes. Okay. Because we hope that if we keep doing a good job, that you're going to love and want to be a member. And that's also a decision we had to make, right, is um, I think you all saw we have a members only app. And because we're in the middle of these conversations and in most cases are getting information in advance, we're able to give our members real time and I've been able to communicate with my board probably at this point so saturated in email but really trying to keep them up to date with what's happening federally down. So we opened the app to non members, which was something we actually when I'm proud of this leadership team is we thought it's just the right thing to do. This is not a time to hold on to information and charge people for it. And so we really believe that if you need the app and you don't right now have any funds to be a member then we want to do a great job taking care of you and your people. And when you do, our hope is that you'll come back and you will be a paying member. And so this, this relief fund is for all independent restaurants and not bifurcated by, you know, who's part of what team. We just want to take care of restaurants. We want to take care of people. So great question. So federal, um, I'm going to give you my one unscripted, totally unscripted moment, which is I'm incredibly disappointed about what happened in Washington today. Um, I you know, woke up today really excited that I thought we were going to get a bill. And I wrote on my own face, my personal Facebook page, I guess my work personal Facebook page, um, that you know, I don't really care if you're Republican, Democrat, or anything in between. Right now, America is hurting, and we need relief. And for some reason, I actually thought it was going to happen. Maybe I'm just am naive. But as the day unfolded and everyone gave their speeches, we're sitting here now, and, and, and it hasn't gotten done. And so it hasn't gotten done um, and we're, we're still here. So there, there's sort of, I wanna call out a couple of pieces that are in this phase three that, that really pertain to us with the caveat that this may change before tomorrow. Um, so first it, we are asking for 
and what's been allocated right now is 349 billion towards small businesses. And you're able to t apply for that in a number of ways, but more importantly, the max loan amount that you could pull is two and a half times your monthly payroll from the year before. There's then a potential loan forgiveness that would go from February through June 30th. And then all the loans that go through the SBA, there'll be no credit test and no collateral or personal guarantee required. That's actually pretty good news for us because many of you either had a strong line of credit or right now, I don't know how many people would put a personal guarantee up with the way the world looks. So those are sort of three components. In here, I don't see today rent addressed. If you were to ask me what I believe will topple everything outside our sector, I think it's going to be real estate. Because right now, if you're a restaurant and can't pay your rent, you're not going to pay your rent. So you don't pay your rent or you try to ask for forgiveness, then your landlord can't pay their rent on the building because it's likely mortgage and it just starts to go up. And unless we find a mechanism for rent and rent relief or rent abatement and the government acts as a backstop, in my opinion, forget about restaurants, that's where I think our problem really is. So we are gonna start digging into this piece of it with the state around rent. We know that in many cases, the federal government has said you can't evict someone, you can't do foreclosures. There's lots of rules coming out on the, I guess, consumer side. We need commercial side as well. That is one area I did not see addressed. Next thing is, and this is a change, and if this sticks, this is very good for a lot of you with more than one location, is that you are able to count as individual restaurants. So if you have five restaurants and each of them has 400 employees, you would now be part of this program. If you had one restaurant with 700 employees, you would not qualify because it's 500 and under. But unlike the Affordable Care Act, they're actually rolling everything up um, under ACA here, they'll count individually. So today, we've had a lot of people the last couple of days say, I'm not gonna qualify. I have 4,000 employees and I have 50 restaurants. Well, none of your restaurants have more than 500. You will now be part of this program. So this is a big win for us if it's able to get done. The next piece that's not in here, but is growing, and I think is something that's incredibly important to you, is business interruption insurance. 99% of the policies that we have seen have said that COVID-19 as a virus does not count as a qualifying event. Emily's personal opinion, garbage. Doesn't matter, it's how the insurance policy is written. So we are working right now with a number of our I guess legislators, because it's about both, uh, both the Senate and, and, and the House, um, we think the way to do it is to use the infrastructure of the insurance company with the backstop, the financial backstop of the government and the restaurant sitting in front saying to their insurance company, I've had this business interruption. The insurance company has to acknowledge that they accept that as a qualifying event. And then they, we leverage, just like we're saying to leverage restaurants to distribute retail and food, there's no difference. We're saying, let's have our insurance companies, this is what they do, they can get checks out like that, and let's have the federal government put the money through them because what we want is business money in our hands right now. That is our recommendation. That is what people like um, Crenshaw and Roy and several others are taking in DC on our behalf because well, frankly, I think it's probably the only way we're going to be able to get it done. But business interruption is a priority. And that is why I go back to my incredible disappointment that our parties cannot get it together right now in D.C. and get us relief. The bill, the phase three bill is a good bill. It's not a great bill. It's a good bill. But it's a bill that has to get passed because there's other things that are so important to Americans outside of even what we do in restaurants. You know, I pray to God, to whoever you pray to, that this gets passed tomorrow because that is the only way we are going to get on to the next phase. And the next phase will be on some of these things like business interruption, further cash payments. We sat on a conference call and some people could say it's theater, but I sat on with uh, President Trump, with the economic advisor, with Scalise, and there were 10,000 of us just listening. 
And once we got past the president, who clearly had scripted remarks, which I would too if I was the president of the United States, um, and then each of his cabinet members spoke and they were clearly more unscripted. I did have confidence that they're trying to work through this. What I'm asking for is that we need to keep pushing our elected officials to get this bill signed into the president, whether there's all perfect parts of it or not, it will not be, but there's enough in here guys that would help us right now and enough that will help small restaurants that we frankly need to get it done. The last, uh, let's see, um, the downloading of the app. Uh, I think Anna will type it in, but it's just texasrestaurant.org forward slash app. Make sure you get the app. And then we're doing a lot of action alerts. That's when we all of a sudden hear that something's gonna close. There's something that's happened legislatively. Perhaps when the phase three bill passes, we can alert you, here it is, here are the components. Um, so make sure you watch for those action alerts that come out because it's just sort of breaking news. And then every night, many of you see um, Anna and I put together um, kind of like our entire day and we try to package it in a way that's easy for you to follow. I try to write a personal note living through this with you. I certainly cannot understand the pain that all of you are in as employees or owners. I can empathize and I can do everything I can to help you, but I try to write each night just from me to you in an informal way so you know you do have a connection and you have a voice here. So before we move kind of done to close, I think we have quite a few questions and if we don't type them in and Anna and I will just take them from here. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Look for the Q&A box that you have on your screen and type your questions in there. You can also type it in the chat, but it's a little harder for us to see. So type your questions in the Q&A box, though I did write a couple down. I did want to uh, just read one comment to you, Emily, that I thought was really good that's come through from Lloyd Nichols um, related to business interruption. Mm -hmm that he really wants to push, and all of us should do this, uh, that our restaurants do not have a viral outbreak. Our business interruption is caused by government shutdown, which is very, very true and a really good point. Yeah, and I think it's really how you interpret it, right? So, so we, I'm shocked that the virus doesn't count. But then again, I've had lots of insurance companies that whatever happens doesn't count. So maybe I'm not that surprised. Um, this is one that's getting louder. You know, and, and you have to remember from sitting in this seat or, you know, with Anna and another leadership team member every day, this is going in phases, right? So first it was, don't close us. Then it was, give us a bunch of stuff to sell. Then it was, now I'm going to have to close. What do I do with all my employees? And now it's, how do, I, how do I either get to rebuild and move on? And so we've naturally, everybody wants it all right now because it's scary. But for me, we're actually just going through the natural life cycle of this. And now we're in this really important point, which is around insurance, which is what are you going to give me? And, and I'll, I'll just, you know, say this to you. We, you know, the comment that was just made, you know, the virus is, is something that we really couldn't see. You know, I, before I came here, I was in China two to three times a month. So I know China really well. I remember right after Christmas hearing about something happening and thinking, oh, it's China. Never could I have imagined, never, that we would be sitting here tonight with my entire family locked in the house after a week and all of you. Here's the issue we have to remember is sort of, this is going to pass, but, but the virus didn't close us down. The government made a decision because of the virus. But if the government closed a piece of our revenue producing ability and is still withholding taxes, one would argue that could be called taking. However, I don't wanna go that route because right now I really feel, especially for our industry, we have our elected officials on board. They are communicating back consistently. Would this help you? What about this? This can't get done. We can't horse trade here. What do you think about that? And we have a national team. I mean, you see Anna and I here and our incredible TRA team spread out all over Austin in three other cities right now, but in, DC, we have a giant National Restaurant Association team that is on the ground working this. And so I really believe to get things done and done well, we need to work together. And right now it is, this is terrible. I believe they had to make this decision. I'm just as irritated as you when I go to HEB and see a hundred people lined up climbing on all over each other today, but we are doing our part. Yeah, we're doing our part. We'll continue to do our part. And in, in turn for that, then we need the relief we deserve because this is not a bailout. And I don't wanna hear one more person say, we're gonna bail out the restaurant industry. You bail someone out after they make a poor decision. We don't need a bailout. We need a relief package because we were harmed. 
and I can tell you, I don't think it needs to get anything more than that because the exact words coming out of at least our state and Governor Quinn's office was, you are so important to us. We are going to do everything to ensure that you are back and you are strong and that you can maintain as much business opportunity as you can. And I truly believe that. So we'll go down business interruption, but, but you know, at some point we didn't close our dining rooms. Um, whether it was for the public good or not, we are in a situation now where we can't earn the revenue that we did in a free enterprise market. So I'll leave that one there. Um, okay, so there's there's quite a few questions related to loans and stimulus. Um, the first I'll read for you from Greg Denherter. Hey, Greg. Um, he said, question for you regarding what is happening on the Hill and the stimulus package up to 10 million versus the SBA disaster economic loans up to 2 million. Are they one and the same or are they two different forms of support? And if yes, can we apply for both? Yes, apply for both regardless, Greg. Apply for both right now. Anything you see that's federally related to a loan, a grant, a maybe not forgiven, forgiven, apply. There is no cost to do it. And so I was listening to one of the attorneys today on a workforce call and they said, just apply. So A, apply. In my understanding, and again, I'm not an attorney, so this is, would be Emily's guidance from TRA, not, not legal advice, is that the economic injury is definitely separate from this loan program or $349 billion. And so the big thing on the $349 billion is the max loan you can take there is two and a half times your monthly payroll from the previous year. That's what's written in right now. So that would be, if you do the math, what you're eligible for, separate for up to $2 million on the economic injury. Perfect. Um, and Jason, I hope that kind of answers your question. I saw you asking about two times average. It's two and a half times. Uh-huh. Two and a half. Yep. Um, okay, great. The next one is from... <coughs> David Henry, I'm, I'm not sure if we know this answer, David, but he asked, what is the threshold for personal assets to qualify for SBA loans? Well, okay, so I believe, and you know what, and Anna, you wrote these down, right? Because I would love to be able to go back and look at this one. Okay, so on this one, I believe it covers under point three, which is that the loans, so, so forget economic injury over here to the right, right? Go after the $349 billion pot loans go through the SBA, there will be no credit test, no collateral, and no personal guarantee. So I actually, you know, again, I think you'll be okay on this one. I think that by tomorrow, we will have the clarity, or I, I would call it the language behind these points. But if we can just make sure we have your contact information, I can dig in, into this in the morning, and then we can just send you a quick note back. Yep, that's perfect. And I have these captured, so we'll make sure to do that. Okay, perfect. Um, another question similar uh, from Chris Fleming on the federal aid, does it currently, as written, have forgiveness for labor spent from the loans? Yes, so you would be able to um, one for one essentially write off the portion that goes towards payroll. And what I mean by write off is the government would repay that portion for you. So if you put X dollars towards payroll currently, this would then qualify you not to pay that portion back. And I think that's really, we would support that because we want to keep people working. Yeah, exactly. Um, ooh, this is a toughie. Uh, Mike is asking, in your personal opinion, how long do you think realistically our restaurants will be shut down? Could we be out of work for months? The virus has not even hit its peak. Do I look for employment now? Goodness. So, you know, I have a, um, get a doctor next to my name, <clears throat> not a medical doctor. Um, I've been asked this a lot um, and I'm an optimist and I have to tell you that the, what I do know um, and mm, what I do know is April 3rd is, should be, the reason that April 3rd was set by the CDC and Governor Abbott followed was that by April 3rd is sort of when this curve should be coming down. I'm sure all of you have been following Italy because it is gut-wrenching and for two days they have now come down the curve so they've had less deaths, which is hard because at one point it peaked, I think at almost 700. And they're now seem to be coming down the curve. And so what they're looking at is, I believe why some of this feels so stay inside, stay six feet apart, you know, no contact, is they want to take that curve that Italy, Italy was hit the worst even now than China, and push that, flatten it down, which means that we may go a little bit longer, long tail on this, but that we may be able to get back out sooner. 
I can tell you my, again, and you asked, this is personal opinion, but what I would recommend if asked is I don't think on April 3rd, and if any of you have kids, you've seen that movie Frozen where it's like, open the door. Like, we can't do that. We can't go from like sheltered in place to restaurants being at 100% capacity because what we don't want is to go back through this again, right? And so even as my kids, I have 14 year old twin girls and they're locked in here. It's like, guys, you can go back to school faster if we all just follow the rules. So I think April 3rd is a super important date. And so April 3rd, we'll see how we're doing. We'll see if all of the measures they put in place are working and making a difference. And then what I would really like to see is not two more months of this. I would like to see us go back to 50% of our seating capacity with six feet between tables, right? What we lobbied for really hard to begin with. So that also might be good for restaurants because remember, as we lose employees, many of them are going into Amazon, Walmart, HEB, Holt, right? They're going to find work because people have to work. And that's why it makes me so angry this package isn't done to at least get something in their hands. Bottom line is if we all of a sudden go from zero to 100, I think it could be really challenging. So I would say if you were to ask me April 3rd, I would love to see the places that have not had the impact. Remember, we have 254 counties and I think it's 31, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, I was shocked this morning, right? I thought every county had a case. As testing increases, those will increase. But you know, my hope is that April 3rd is a really important date and that very soon after that, maybe a week after, we can start to go back and start to bring these dining rooms you know, back open again. And then we slowly ease into it and then we're quickly back to 100. I think that's good for employees, it's good for us, and it's certainly good for this incredible virus we're battling. Um, you know, we have a marketplace event in June. It's the biggest trade show around food in Texas. And we are waiting ourselves until April 7th to make a decision because we know if we come out of this, that in June, we are going to have a lot of people looking as they rebuild their businesses for products and services. And all of you are going to want to get out and get somewhere. So we want to hold on to that event to the last minute. And as an organization, we're holding until about the 7th of April. And that's when I think we'll have a good indicator. But you know, we're, we're doing a good job right now of listening and following the rules. And I think we need to keep doing that and we need to keep doing our part. And I think we'll be out of this sooner than trying to get into June and July. Perfect. Um, there's a question from Jeffrey that I'll actually answer for you. Uh, should we take a break? Uh, <laughs> uh, he's asking if TRA would look into setting up a moderated chat room so that people could share ideas and information and actually, Jeffrey, that's available now on our app. So if you've downloaded our mobile app, you can do that now in the forums. Uh, and what I'll do, Alexandra from my team, she's amazing, is listening in on this webinar. And I know she's taking lots of notes of things to follow up on. Uh, so that's one thing we'll follow up on tomorrow is give you guys instructions on how to use the app and actually use it in that with that feature to share ideas and help each other as we go through this giant paperwork mess, basically. And you could also then search by that topic too. So if you find something and you want to know about unemployment or X, and you can actually find people in our membership base that are dealing with the same problem. So Anna, thank you. And I, you know, that's something we have to just remind people that's there. Um, but you can even just post and say, who's dealing with X? And then people can join your forum and you can chat away. Perfect. Um, and then this is, a, this is an interesting question too. Okay. If an employee or employees who haven't been terminated, but their hours have been significantly reduced. So like if you're doing curbside, you're not have, you don't have them employed for as much as you had before. And they have applied for unemployment in order to you know, reach that buffer zone for them because they're reduced hours. Um, and we, the restaurant owner, gets a loan to pay payroll for those employees. Would those employees continue to receive unemployment checks and payroll checks from us? I would suggest to go to the 2 p.m. webinar, Anna, because it's a great question. Here's why, it's, it's gonna be about timing, right? So the, 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 this phase three package that allows you to take the loan money to pay for payroll that then, because I, I know what you're trying to do, right? You're saying if I can get a little unemployment and a little bit here, I can keep that employee because they're so good and it's always better to keep employees. And then can I just ride this out? But then if this new phase three comes in, right, can they stay in that unemployment? I can use that money. And then that's essentially free money. You know, I, 
it's very smart as I think about what you asked. And I think that I would probably do that too if I was allowed, but I would, I would join the two o'clock or in again, if you have the individual's name, I'm not sure who asked this question, I can go right to the workforce commission in the morning and just, we can send you back a direct answer and then post it. If it's just, if you need this now, Anna, we can just do it in the morning with, with um, Tommy. And the, the rest of the, that's actually an anonymous question, but if you, you have all our email, email addresses, so email us and let us know uh, yeah. and just your name so we can get in touch with you and get the answer. In fact, a lot of the other questions right now have to deal more with Workforce Commission specifically. So I'd really encourage you guys to join us at that 2 p.m. webinar on Thursday, where we'll have lots of lawyers around who can answer all these very particular questions for you. Yeah, there's three or four lawyers that are going to join us. And I know I had a member this morning that had something pretty complicated that he received from um, Alabama because he owns a restaurant there too. And I was able to package it together and got an answer back within about two and a half hours. So, you know, we can't become the Texas Workforce Commission because of all that we're kind of battling, but we do have a lot of, you know, lines in. And, and I have to say, you know, you never want to like the Texas Workforce Commission, but they're really one of our best partners right now. Um, they have been extraordinary um, helping employers navigate what is the best thing to do for you without losing sight as what's the best thing to do for your employees. Because I mean, gosh, guys, they're hurting. We're, we're laying off so many people right now. And so getting their guidance will be critical. But if it's an urgent matter, um, I'm E Knight at TX restaurant.org. I just got a new email address. Um, and so it's just e night. And so if you do have something and it's really clear, send it to me. If I don't have the answer, I will link you to the right person um, because I know how critical it is right now to get you information quickly. Cool. Um, and then I also uh, wanted to suggest too, if you are an active TRA member, you have access to the TRA Law Center where we have two wonderful uh, attorney partners, Jackson Lewis and Monty and Ramirez. Um, who are available to answer your question as well. So if you are a TRA member, mention that, and we can connect you to some of these lawyers. They're really wonderful and very responsive as well. Okay, so um, I'm gonna leave this last question because there's a lot of really good questions. I'm gonna take a whole list of it so we can get back to them, write you guys back whenever we do the recap. But Emily, I'm gonna give you an easy one from your friend, David Denny. He wants to know if we're gonna be able to sell alcohol curbside even after the disaster is over. Oh, that's a good question. Um, will we? I don't know because that will be the governor's decision. However, I think the reason that I am imploring people to do this the safe way and the right way is that what people cannot forget is that we're essentially in a trial period, right? So we've gotten the ability to do this. And if we, if we follow the rules as we should and we don't take advantage of the system, we have a built-in case study that we did not have when we went and asked for delivery. Right. So as a parent, when I walked into this job and they said, we just passed alcohol delivery. I'm like, what? Because the last thing I would want is my daughters when they're old enough to get alcohol. Right. Well, then I look at what they actually accomplished. It was brilliant. The former CEO and a team passed this. It's so smart. So I actually want this to go well because I want to be able to walk in and say, you know, look, this was a huge success. This was the revenue that our restaurants brought in. This was the amount of employees they were able to keep and look at how safely we did it. So David, 100%, this to me is the catalyst to get this full time and that will absolutely be our ask as we go forward. Perfect, awesome. Well, thank you guys for all your questions tonight. Emily, you did great. Yay, thank you guys. Have a great night, hang in there, um, email us and um, we'll probably do the, if you enjoy this, let us know. Um, you know, we don't wanna waste your time, but we feel like Sometimes just having a live face versus an email is good. If you enjoy it, just let us know and, and we'll keep doing it because I can tell you that we can fill up this amount of time every day with how much is coming out every minute. So thanks so much. Thanks to all of you. Um, get some rest and we'll see you soon.